couple of my rules for moderating the panel. Okay. Uh, one, don't ask hypothetical questions. What would they have done in oh, that episode? Go. Thank you. <laughs> if they're not writers except for him. See okay. him after the show and he can tell you what he would have wrote otherwise. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. Uh, Mark wrote the show for how many years? Uh, about 10-11 uh, years. I did the show from uh, 1994 to 2000 and then uh, came back in last year and did a few episodes of Dino Charge. Does everybody like Dino Charge so far? Oh. That's what Chip wants to hear, I'll, right? I'll pass it along to Chip. Yeah. <laughs> Um, no morphing things, are they? Yeah, no morphing. Oh, God. Yeah. It, it, believe it or not, no morph. their wrists are really sore from writing autographs, and morphine hurts the wrists. So. All right. Speaking of down charts, I know um, Kendrick Morgan and Kendall Morgan are not related. Yeah. That's their last name. You're asking a hypothetical question. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this is good, sir. Wow, uh, Naji just showed up, everybody. Hey! Hey! hey. 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 Does everybody know who everybody is up here? Yeah. Yeah. Do I need to do any introductions? No. Sure. No. Sure. Okay, one guy. There we go. First off, Steve Cardenas. Morphin, then he did a small stint uh, Zio, and then he hurt his back in Turbo. He just can't drive cars. Speaking of cars, Turtle Van and Babu. Nice segue. Yeah. Then we have Christopher Cayman Lee, known as Andros, the man of Field Zorda. <laughs> Melody Perkins. Hi! <laughs> <laughs> the bad girl turned good. Yeah. Slightly, like Slightly more good. More money. <laughs> no matters. Alright. Mark Linton, he the writer. We already went through some of his uh, pedigree. He knows the show backwards, forwards, side to side. And he's here today to, to answer more questions more. about it. Yay! what make the show. Uh, him and, and people like Chip, they work right on demand. It's great. Woo. Back when he had hair. <laughs> and the divorce guy. Too. And of course, Naji, Power Ranger Samurai Blue. Yeah. Yeah. And met his mom, she's out there at the table. Oh. She tells the good stories. <laughs> So, um, again, I have a lot of little bit rules. If I don't like your question, I'm just going to go on to the next question. That's just how it works. Uh, there's no morphing. There's no hypothetical questions. Do they remember what happened in episode 13? Probably not. Um, are they all going to be at Morphicon? Yes. <laughs> and we have a, a, a lot of Red Rangers. We got one blue. You know, only blue. blue. Oh, damn it. Two, oh, two. Oh, two. <laughs> two blue, one pink. Everybody else was red. So, do we have any like Red Ranger questions for the Red Rangers? You just raise your hand. <laughs> Not no, I'll bet you guys. I'll see you. <laughs> Are they ever going to do like another Forever Red? Episode, possibly. That, that's not hypothetical. That's a good question. That's really up to Chip and Savon. And I would say write in to Savon and say, do another Forever Red. If they get enough people demanding it, they can certainly make something happen. And if they did, I don't think the Disney people would be included either. I no, I don't. They, they, no, they do, Disney. but they don't like us. <laughs> the Savan, the Savan people, they don't like the Disney seasons. It's they, kind of the Disney seasons weren't ran by them, but yeah, they, so, they we're them. <laughs> <laughs> so we're dead to them. We're dead to them. It's fine. 
I think SPDs held in higher regard yeah. than Mystic Force. Yeah. Uh, and it, you know, it's been my knowledge, listening to you guys, that the two of the favorite seasons have been Time Force and SPD. Oh, right? <laughs> I don't make this up, this is what I hear. SPD made my character a homeless person in the first episode, that sucks. <laughs> Maybe that's why it was so well ran. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best battle ever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, okay, yeah. more questions. Wow. More questions. Najee's here for Samurai. Who has a Samurai question? Power Ranger Samurai. Okay, you're almost raising your hand there in blue. You're already wearing blue, so. <laughs> yeah. He's got a question. Who's got a question? Black. There we go. How is the chemistry between you and Jack? Uh, there's no interview. <laughs> <laughs> One more time. <laughs> hey, that's a hypothetical question. I'm going to get a picture of the Oh, we played Mia? Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, she, uh, uh the chemistry. It, it was fun, it was cool. I, I didn't, when we were starting, um, starting the show, I didn't know that our characters were gonna, you know, have some sort of interest in each other a little bit. Um, but yeah, it, 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 me and her had good chemistry on and off uh, set. She, uh, she coincidentally married a guy off set, I don't know if you guys know this, but during, while we were filming, there was a lighting guy who, would be doing the lighting during the show, and she fell in love with him, and they married while we were filming. Wow. And wow. Yeah, wow. so it, it was, our chemistry was good regardless, but she got married, and, you know. <laughs> okay, so all you guys out there that work in Hollywood, yeah. Yeah. lighting <laughs> it really pays off. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, uh, go ahead. Hey, question uh, for all you guys. Um, Growing up in the series has been such a great fan. I want to know, even after work, what's some of the biggest challenges that you face and how many of them are rejection, if any, whether in the field or anything that you give us uh, examples of the community. Challenges for say. I heard all any like any kind of any kind of challenge? Yeah, any any personal series that you like today I didn't want to pay for parking and the parking guy was like <laughs> Like, nah, I'm talented. And he's like, alright, go ahead. So that was a challenge. As a follow-up to that, I've, I've got your part. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, so I guess I think I know what you're asking. Uh, as far as actors go, uh, we we get rejected all the time. Like, um, and then we get booked. It, it takes so many tries. You just have to stick to your craft. You have to always be, you know, in an acting class. You have to just, you know, give it your all. Um, and you'll eventually get booked. Hopefully, you'll eventually get booked if you stick stick with it and you're talented. Um, but as actors. All of us, we've, we've gotten rejected, you know, for shows, you know, this, that. But it, don't let it phase your character. Just, you know, keep going forward, and um, um, and you can possibly be a, be a ranger in the future or a superhero, regardless. So, you know, just keep going. I think was what. Is yeah, I mean, just basically don't give up. Yeah, don't give up. Just because one show doesn't want you, you know, one photo shoot doesn't want you, whatever it is, just keep going. You'll be surprised how they book so, they book, I'm telling you, your background doesn't matter. They book all different types of people for different roles. So just keep going and uh, get good agencies behind you, good acting classes, and uh, go all the way. Um, besides the helmets, do you guys get to take any home props? None of these are from the show. They don't let us take home anything. Uh, I don't know if somebody may have went home with anything. That's a different question. Some people watch That's it. probably more I want to <laughs> I stole my jacket. I stole my SPD jacket. I stole my morpher. I stole what? I stole a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> because they're not going to 
gonna give if you're not gonna give it to me, then I'm like, come on. It's like, why can't I have my jacket? You made it for me. Yeah. You're not gonna sit in a warehouse in New Zealand. Like, let's be reasonable. <laughs> I didn't sell mine, I said hell on. Um, what else? There's a couple other things. But yeah, um, they, 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 they don't give you anything. It's weird. And it's not like they're paying us. I got my astronomer boots. Oh, say that. My leather astronomer boots. Did they give them to you? Yeah, I just, yeah. <laughs> That's not called giving them, but you just did <laughs> I had to buy my jacket on the show. Oh. You did? You did? Yeah. Oh, I had to buy it. I mean, it was, no, no. It was, well, it was, Something that I wore. Yeah, and, 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 oh, and, oh, and, yeah, I had, yeah, I had to buy a jacket. They were like, oh, we're going to get rid of this. Do you want it? And I was like, uh, yeah, I guess. And they are like, eh, 15, 20 bucks. And I was like, really? Yeah, right? Yeah, no, no, yeah, 15, 20 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they were going to 15, 20 bucks. You know, they. Did you ever come home with anything on set? A lot of stuff, yeah. Uh, but if you guys follow me on Instagram, here's a quick little plug, but for a reason. So TMNT Van is my Instagram, and recently I went to somebody's house that had uh, the Frax eyeline from Time Force. We actually had a, a Frax eyeline that somebody held, and I have, there's a picture of that on my Instagram. And there's some other power I can remember, but I don't want to say it out loud. One of the things that I have is I have the boots from uh, the movie that, um, that I wore when we did our, our hands and feet at the um, at the Chinese theater for the uh, um, movie? movie? Yeah, mm -hmm. I kept I have those boots. That's about one of the about one of the only things that I was able to walk away with. Um, but that's pretty cool though, man. And we took the the when we did the ceremony there, where we put our hands and feet in there and signed our names. Um, they took and donated those those uh, cement blocks to uh, children's hospitals around the country. So it was kind of cool. Yeah, it was fun. Nice. I got a couple pictures of that. Oh, you got some pictures yeah. of the ceremony? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was funny. Now, did, did you uh, walk away with anything from New Zealand? Um, I didn't even, uh, not really. Uh, I had a really cool training uh, costume made. I don't know if you guys seen our seen us in our little training outfits, but I, I had one made to the exact cue from the uh, from the show, which is kind of cool. Um, and the rest of the stuff I kind of like bought. Yeah, it, most shows don't let you walk away with anything off set. As, yeah. as a prop man, prop guy for television movies, it's my job to make sure they don't steal stuff. Either. <laughs> um, <laughs> because we have to return that. Often stuff is rented. And I remember doing just a pilot, and the star walked off with this key for a lock. And it was a old-fashioned key to an old-fashioned lock. And he just walked off, and he never called back. So we had to buy the lock from the rental company, which the rental was like 25 bucks. The lock was 600 because he took the key. Since we didn't return it, it's no longer functioning. We had to buy it from them. So that's why all often stuff isn't returning. Now, for shows like this where they have jackets and stuff, it does go into storage and eventually it gets destroyed. Uh, can you show me a picture of that Star Trek? What oh, yeah. So I was, I was recently. Uh, at the Paramount Warehouse last week where they destroyed, I saw literally all the sets from the first Star Trek movie that just came out, the, the recent, most recent one, the very first one. They destroyed all the sets. Um, they had Spock's birthing chair they just took a sledgehammer to. And I, I have a lot of Star Trek friends that are fans. And I, you know, I'm a fan to, to an extent, but I have friends that are like, they live for that. And I, I just started sending him pictures, because you know, we're, we're not allowed to take pictures, but I'll take them and I'll send them off to people that I know won't, won't distribute them. And this guy was like crying. He sent me a picture of him crying. He's like, can I just get a truck and pick that stuff up? I go, no, it doesn't work like that, man. Once they give it the go, they bring a 40-yard dumpster and they keep bringing them until they're done. And in, in some cases, we're told to dispose of stuff. Now, dispose and destroy are two different words in the business. Dispose means I can secretly just take it away. As long as it's not there in the morning, I've done my job. Destroy means they have to hit it with the hammer, put it in a trash can. Two different words, and that's how stuff gets out on other markets sometimes for, for movies and stuff. Another question. Shoot. Has working on Powers hampered your career in any way, like trying to get other acting gigs after? Or? 
I became a Ninja Turtle. Is that better or worse? <laughs> that is a huge step down. I don't know. I beat the crap out of I just performed a halftime show for the Sacramento Kings on Friday with Vanilla Ice, which I think is a good time. <laughs> Before, so I was like, oh yeah, I'll just, I'll just get on another show. It's so fun. <laughs> so then I started testing for these pilots, and I realized it's a little harder than I thought. So I guess it kind of gave me this like false idea of Hollywood. So it was kind of hard to get over that and be like, oh, it's really hard because I didn't really realize I wanted to be an actress until I was on the show. So yeah. I, mean, I don't think it's helped or hampered. Uh, you know, it's been I've been lucky thus far since the show. Um, I got She's the Man like ten days after I wrapped Power Rangers, so I was like, yeah, got that out of the way, got a movie right away. And so I've been good. So I, I, I think it's just it, it hasn't helped or hampered. I think it's sort of neutral. Just, you know, it is something that it did, and it's great, and people love it. And uh, but I don't think anybody holds it against you. You know what I mean? I think there used to be a stigma against yeah. it early on, yeah. but now it's more of a springboard. Like, oh, you were on Rangers, they maybe look at you a little more, more favorable. And that's something, uh, Naji, I mean, can you lend that? Does that help you out on, out on casting calls? Um, I, I kind of go, go with uh, Brandon on this one. Uh, that hasn't really helped or hampered as far as other projects. The only thing that will help with um, is like uh, more of like, Fan appeal, like they'll be like, "Oh, he has a kids back, a kids demographic." You know, if it's a kids show that we're about to put him on, you know, help or whatever. But um, yeah, you know, hasn't really helped or hampered that much. Yeah, I don't think they go, "We're gonna book him because he's a Power Ranger." That's not how you got that it's, McDonald's commercial. I wish. <laughs> yeah, I wish. I, I, there was like three callbacks. I was like, for a commercial, really? Oh, yeah. So no, it, I, I wish, but uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great. So I remember the first few episodes of Mighty Morphin. I think they had guns, and then did they kind of disappear? Was there a story? Uh, no. I, I, yeah. No. 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 Well, I'm trying to think, but uh, that's a good question for that, that if we had because uh, we uh, last year in. Uh, in New Zealand, we we watched the first episode uh, on Thanksgiving with the cast, um, and uh, they'd never seen it before. Uh, and I, we didn't really have we had blasters, I think, but we didn't call them guns because you really couldn't call an item what it was uh, because of just because of standards and practices. And they'd say, say for instance, we couldn't uh, say there. I had an episode that the monster was carrying around something. Uh, it was the second episode that I did for them. It was Putty on the Brain. Uh, and there was a, uh, a, the monster was carrying around a fire extinguisher. There was no question. This was a fire extinguisher. But we could not call it a fire extinguisher. But we could call it something slightly different, something with a slightly science fiction edge to it. And then they'd say, oh, okay, we can use it now. And it's like, but on the show, it's going to look like a fire extinguisher. It's going to fire like one. But uh, as long as we call it something else, we're we're okay. It's like, um, shoot, um, fire starter. It was it was something like that. Well, it was the because it was the uh, the salad guana monster. Uh, he can which, remember that off the top of his head. Which, wow. was, right. which was a, a salamander uh, mixed with uh, an iguana. Um, of something like that. My first. My first monster was a uh, was the Sockadillo monster, which was half armadillo, half soccer ball. Um, so, so that's you know, sometimes that's how you remember things. Is you, you jam these two things together, um, and that that helps. It's a mnemonic. And, uh, but for the for the uh, the guns, we just we, so we would have to call them call them blasters. Uh, when we did uh, uh, Wild West Rangers, because uh, that was my episode. Um, we uh, uh, we did have we did have pistols. Yeah. Um, but that was that, that was, I think that was the only time where we actually referred to them as such. Um, 
This is a writing question. Uh, I'm a film student and I have a hard time writing scripts. And you know, sometimes my teacher would be like, you know, write a 10 page script. So that's basically 10 minutes. So, right. I mean, I, how do you fill up 10 minutes? <laughs> I guess is like, you know, with dialogue and such, you don't want it to be boring. Sure. And things like that. So I know what not to do, but it's hard to make keep it interesting for ten pages. Well, there's there's a lot of different things that you have to do in order to keep any scene uh, active. And the, the, what they'll tell you is is that uh, a lot of times when people read your script, they'll read the first ten pages, and and that's all they'll give you uh, before they decide. Oh, like I really don't want to read the rest of this. So the first ten pages have to be really good. So the main thing it has to be is really interesting. How you create interest is through conflict. Uh, and the, you've got to have characters who have strong goals. Uh, and uh, in each scene, they have to have some action that they're, they're trying to do. And as, in, as actors, you'll, you'll look for that in the scene. You'll look for what's, what's my intention? What am I trying to accomplish here? And what is this guy across from me in the scene trying to stop me from getting? Uh, and as a writer, you do the same thing. You look, you look for those things that, uh, that sustain that conflict. Uh, and at the end of the scene, it goes one way or another. Uh, and then you move on to the next scene. And you just keep doing that for 10 pages. Uh, but uh, I mean, that's a very, that's simplification of what you do. But uh, the, the big thing is to think about the things in life that interest you, that give, that give you passion. Uh, and when you're writing about that, also think of the things that give, get in the way of that passion and put that in there too. So that's, but, but, but it's, uh, there's so many movies that, that you know, just are bland and don't do anything. And that's, and so many scripts do that because there's, they forget this, this idea of conflict. And it's just, that's why you never have a scene. They try to give you, don't do a scene around a dining room table. Don't, don't do dinner. Uh, you'll see, don't do phone calls. You know, where you, where you at least when you, if you watch anybody in a phone call, in a movie, you'll notice they never hang up. They never say goodbye or they, they, don't, they don't even say hello sometimes. They'll just pick up the phone and start talking to somebody. Uh, and you'll cut in and cut away before that happens. So because that's the boring parts of life. And the scripts are about the, the, the things in life that, uh, that, that make you want to live it or that make you, make you want or struggle. Uh, but it's not about um, the mundane stuff. It's not about the mundane stuff at all. So anytime you look at a scene and say, boy, this isn't interesting, it's probably because you've got the mundane stuff in there. So you want to root that out as much as possible. That ruins my plans for Taxman, the movie. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you guys have seen this. What are your favorite seasons? What is your favorite season? We'll start with Najee and work our way down. Uh, Mighty Morphin. Yeah. Yeah. SPD. <laughs> I like Mighty Morphin a lot. Uh, there are some, there. I like parts of Turbo and Zio too, uh, but uh, but after but then uh, Lightspeed Rescue I changed my name on. I wasn't uh, I didn't go as Mark Litton. Uh, my name under that was John Fletcher. Uh, so it's, there's a few episodes in Power Rangers Space I went under John Fletcher, but it wasn't because I didn't like the show. I like I like that. I thought you were gonna say it's Space is your favorite. I, it's one of my favorites. <laughs> Space, I think so. Um, you were saying though, apart from the series that we were on, so <laughs> yeah. I can't say in space. Did you say that? Uh, yeah, you said, I just you, answered it. You just, yeah, yeah, you just jump right on that because you don't care. <laughs> so that's not, that's how Brandon does things, you know. Um, if I can't pick in space, then I would pick um, Lux. Yeah, I would pick Lost Galaxy because Danny was my buddy. So. <laughs> Oh! oh. oh. already knows. <laughs> we were like besties. Even though I was on Mighty Morphin through Wild Force, I like Time Force. Time Force. Um, I, 
I still think um, that my favorite uh, uh, season to work on was Zio. Um, you know, I think they, you know, for me, like I, I were talking earlier to some of these guys, and it's like, you know, I had never done any acting before in my life when I auditioned for the show. Um, you know, I just did karate and some gymnastics and stuff, and that was what got me the part. But I had never been in an acting class, never, it was never like a desire of mine. So when I first started on the show, it showed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Paul Schreier was my acting coach. Bolt was my acting coach, kind of helped me get like, you know, comfortable around the camera and stuff. So those first couple of seasons of Mighty Morphin was really hard, but you know, as, as Zeal rolled around, you know, I kind of started developing the craft a little bit and started having a lot more fun with it, and they gave my character a lot more to do. So um, I know you're supposed to you know, pick a different one, but you know, that was like a personal struggle for me. So um, I say Zeal was my favorite season to work on because uh, you know, it was really a lot of character development in that one for me, so I was, I was happy to be a part of that. Lines of the last one, but favorite Megazord, hands down. Uh, let's just say Mighty Morphin, we're all good, right? Yeah. <laughs> the first Megazord was really cool. Although I do like the Red Dragon Thunder Swords. Woo! Also a favorite of mine as well. Yeah, the Red Dragon Thunder Swords is on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> Serpentera. Serpentera, that's a good one. Yeah. I don't like that one. The eight sword sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Back to the future shirt. Okay, um, Hot Wolf Con is a huge staple in our Mario community, and the fifth one's right around the corner, and I'm sure all of us are excited. Uh, I was wondering, for each of you, what was your most memorable thing from the past Morphin Cons you've been in, and, and uh, what, what are you hoping to see uh, in this upcoming one? I did not pay him. I would say that one of my favorite experiences from Morphicon was the one that we just did uh, last the, a couple years ago, um, where I got to meet uh, Geki, um, the uh, original, you know, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he uh, that was cool to meet the original, the real OG Red Ranger, the original one from the show, from the Super Sentai series. That was pretty dope. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the last uh, Morphicon was actually the first one that I'd ever been to, so like everything was you know new and memorable. Um, one thing that I got a lot was how does it feel having been the guy that killed Zordon, <laughs> and then everybody brings up crap about the hair a lot. So that's what I remember a lot of was those questions. The hair was awesome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so yeah, the last part of Morphicon was my first one as well, and I just it just dawned on me this whole community that you're referring to. I didn't really know that it existed, so I was kind of overwhelmed and I was really excited and I don't know, I just felt really grateful to be there and so I'm looking The first uh, Morphicon I attended was 2010, uh, and th that was like a, the first time a lot of the guys had gotten together, and I hadn't seen them. That was here. In that was here in this in this building, uh, and we hadn't seen the cast and the crew for a long time, uh, and so there's there's that aspect of it. But the overwhelming thing that 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 got to all of us is when people came up and talked to us about what the show meant to them. And it turned out that the show meant to them things that we didn't realize in terms of that, about how powerful an experience it was for you as kids, how, uh, what it may have done for, for you in terms of helping uh, people through just people who had hard uh, problems growing up, and how the show helped them have a place to go to uh, that was outside of their own lives and how helpful that was to them. So that, to me, was the most meaningful experience we had. Uh, I think the last, for, the, for me, the last one was uh, doing the, uh, the Red Ranger panel, because there was a whole bunch of us there. And, uh, you know, when you have like 20 other guys who have been the Red Ranger, you kind of get a sense of, you know, just how big the franchise is uh, and the staying power of the franchise. 
Um, and it's, it's hit a nerve in, in, uh, in pop culture that, you know, I don't think any other franchise has really replicated. Um, and to be a part of that is just really, really cool. And, you know, 10 years ago when I started doing the show, no idea that, you know, 10 years later I'd be here and you all would be here and we're still talking about it. And that's uh, it's really cool. Um, I like uh, I like Power Morphicon because uh, we get to bring the whole cast together, um, which we did last last year. Uh, just everybody from our cast: the pink, the yellow, the red, the green. Everybody came, so I I I, I looked at it as a really good family reunion that we can experience, and you know y'all uh, the fans can experience as well. So I, I like Power Morphicon for that. So and it's awesome. It's got sense. <laughs> and I just noted that it's, it's from, since 2010, we went from just having it as big as this show to 2016, we'll have the entire convention center over on the other side. Mm -hmm. So that's how much it's grown. Uh, we've been able to grow it and grow to the point where before 2010, you guys were not at shows. And it's been the success of Power Morphicon that you guys are at shows. There's a ranger at a show every week. You know, that's happened because of Power Morphicon and because of you guys, the fans. So. As much as we're first time in the league, Angelos is known as one of the most iconic Red Rangers on the franchise. Very important moments. Is there anything that you would change about the character or done differently you wish would have happened? I have. Good. I, I'm really glad that you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I was sitting there listening to you, and I was like, he's going to do it, isn't he? He's going to bring it. He's going to say something about Zord. I mean, he's going to do it. Um, uh, anything that I would have changed, like, the about the character, the honestly? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, honestly, there is one thing that, aside from the hair, it's a pain in the ass, but aside from that, there was one thing that I did not care about with the character. It wasn't his personality or anything like that, I honestly never liked his name. I didn't like Andros as, as, as his name. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. When, when they first told me about it, they are like, yeah, this is your character Andros. And I was like, what? Why? What? what? That's not my name, right? Yeah, yeah, you're going to be Andros. And I was like, that's... I don't know. I don't want to do that. And then his best friend is Zane. And I was like, that's a really cool name. Why can't I have that one? Give me that name. No, switch it up. That was literally the only thing that I would change, pretty much, as far as I can think of. Yeah, that would be it. So, yeah. Thank you for that, though, and not bringing up Zordon. Um, I, so, I recently watched the YouTube short film of the Power Rangers, like the modern Power Rangers. I just wanted to know how did y'all honestly feel about that with the violence and everything? And I'm still back to get ready to make a new Power Ranger movie. I think that really uh, goes to Rocky. Yeah. It's yeah, yeah. Yeah. played me, right? Yeah. That's cool, man. <laughs> we, we, we actually did make a, a YouTube response to that film. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah, and that's on the, the Power Morphicon YouTube channel, <laughs> and it's uh, called Redream, <laughs> starring Steve Gardenas. <laughs> oh, yeah. And so right. that's the best I think response we can have to, to the movie. But uh, yeah, no. Actually, personally, I, I thought the special effects and and uh, you know everything was really cool. The fight scenes were amazing. Um, I thought it was pretty genius. Um, you know, and I even liked some of like you know the points that you know Rocky was making. Uh, you know what I mean? It's like yeah, he turned to the dark side, so to speak. You know what I mean? And and kind of betrayed everybody. But you know, nobody ever thinks like that. You know, when he was making a point about hey, you know. You know, Zordon, you know, kind of took advantage of a bunch of young kids, you know, impressionable kids, you know, and, and you know, had him do all of his bidding and stuff, you know, and it's like, it's an interesting way to look at it, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, it's like, why would you, why would you pick young kids to do it, you know, um, as opposed to like trained, you know, uh, whatever. But I just, I thought it was interesting, um, but uh, yeah, I definitely wouldn't say kids go watch it because it was very, very violent, you know. Um, but uh, I just, it was an interesting take, it was an interesting parody. Right here. Um, what's been the most difficult aspect of actually filming every single season for all you guys? 
other than being in New Zealand? <laughs> Craft service table. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting around or waiting for hours to be in in a, in a scene while they're filming other people doing stuff That could be really tedious and you're not allowed to go anywhere You know you're, 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 you're not gonna be on set for like four or five hours, but you got to sit in your trailer anyway yeah. if, if you don't work in Hollywood most of acting is city for You could be there an entire day For a setup and then you do shoot for two minutes and then it's another setup, and you're there for another hour or two hours. You, 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 you try to find ways to, to make up with the time, and that's what uh, Steve is really I think, implying. I think for me, it was, you know, most shows, uh, you have, like, scenes off, and you're not in every single scene in every shot. So, you know, you go in, you do one scene, you leave. You go, you do two scenes, you leave. You're there Monday, you shoot Wednesday, you might work Thursday, you have Tuesday, Friday off. But in Power Rangers, you're in every scene, every scene, every day. Even if you don't need to be in the scene, they'll just put you in the scene. Uh, so I used to be like, y'all, like, why am I here? Like, I didn't know my character doesn't even need to be here. Well, we need you here, because it's that type of show. So that guy was really frustrating. Anybody else? I just want to say that Power Rangers has ruined my life in a good way. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> it's it's like 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 <laughs> okay, this one's from Christopher Cameron Lee. Yep. Okay, well, how did you, think, how did you yes, feel sir. about knowing that the fact that In Space might have been the end of the Power Rangers franchise? Like, it would have been the series finale. Um, yeah, when, when I first started the series, they actually came up and told us. They said, uh, we think that this is going to be the last season. Um, then pretty short on, some uh, they came back and they were like, you know what, no, this is actually doing pretty good, so we're going to keep it going. And, you know, we all felt pretty good about that, and then they said, and now we're going to get rid of all you guys and bring in a whole bunch of new guys. <laughs> Thank you for doing so great. Um, less thrilled about that part, but, you know, yeah, we... We were happy just with the fact that we had so much fun and we did such a good job with it that it they changed their minds and they were like, yeah, now we're gonna keep it going for a while. So I don't know. Thank, Thank you. you. That. Thank you. I try. I owe you a lot, I guess. Yes, yes, you did. Yes, we did. <laughs> or Melody. Melody. Joy playing as Power Astronomer or Corona. Astronomer. Why? Because. It's so much more fun to be bad. Because I, I don't think that I'm like, that's not good. I'm it sounded pretty good. good. Well, that's how I'm going to take it. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Other than the ranger you were, what color would you be? Would you want to be? I'll be. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Naji. Pick a color, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Orange. Yeah. Red, I guess. Oh. Red. <laughs> Red. Red. <laughs> I'm gonna say silver. <laughs> I'm gonna say white. That is my biggest double. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna say red. No, I mean blue. Uh, I actually think the Green Ranger's pretty dope, man. Actually, uh, that's pretty good. No one's gonna deny that. Periscope live right now. All right, we got, this is the five minute warning. Oh, oh shoot. This is serious. Right. Five minute warning. Serious with this. Who's gonna be the last question? There we go. This is for everyone. So what have you guys been doing after the show? Other than being here? <laughs> What are you doing after the show? I think that, that question may be more real. What are you doing after the show? Probably more appropriate that question, what are you doing now? Right. What are you doing now? Well, yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm on tour right now with, with Comic Con. We go like pretty much like almost every single weekend. You're talking Wizard World? No. Not Wizard World. 
I just do different, lots of different comic -Con, okay. different comic -Con <laughs> conventions all over, all over the world. You know, pretty much almost every single weekend in a different city. You know, next week I'll be in Pennsylvania. The week after that will be in Lexington, Kentucky. Or um, Lexington Con. Yeah, Lexington Con is a great show. Uh, you know, it's just whatever. And every year it's different, and every week it's a new city and. It's super exciting, but the, the one thing that's constant is like the fans, you know? They keep coming out, and so it's it's great. We're, we're, we're very humbled and grateful for that, you know? Um, so that's why I try to, to give back as much as I can, and, and uh, yeah, it takes up a lot of my time, but I, I really enjoy it. So uh, I'm gonna keep touring for a while. Awesome. As long as you guys still want me coming out. Uh, between the Power Ranger conventions that I go to, like Steve does across the country, I also am the, uh, official Ninja Turtles for Playmates Toys now, that just happened. Um, so I, I travel around the country doing like uh, state fairs and events and stuff and uh, with the Ninja Turtles and I, I recently hooked up with Vanilla Ice two years ago so now I'm his official turtle team so every, pretty much every concert that Vanilla Ice does across the country, uh, I'm there with him. Uh, we just did the, like I said, we just did the NBA uh, Kings game in Sacramento on Friday night for the halftime show, but that's pretty much what I do. I dress in a turtle costume and get sweaty. Uh, I've only just started, like within the last year or so, doing conventions, but you know I'm trying to keep a pretty busy schedule with that. Um, but for the last several years, I have been writing my own comic book, which that's like really what I'm trying to focus on is my writing. Uh, specifically just that um, and we are now trying to we're coming up with a second storyline too so we're branching off we're trying new things and all that kind of stuff so yeah that takes a lot for the um, I'm still kind of I don't know I'm thinking about getting back into acting I did a short uh, not that long ago comedy that was really fun um, doing some writing and I still do some catalogs some modeling we shall see. Um, I'm still writing. I've got uh, two scripts we're in development right now for uh, a couple of different production companies. Uh, one about street racing, uh, and uh, another is, is kind of like a film noir thriller. And then uh, in a couple of months, there'll be a movie out called uh, The Bounce Back, which is a romantic comedy that stars uh, Shamar Moore from uh, Criminal Minds. Uh, and in that one, I've just done the uh, uh, the, the adaptation, the, the novelization of the movie. So that'll that'll come out in a little while. Uh, just been acting stuff. Um, <laughs> big deal, just on TV. I do, however, have a new show coming out on Friday night. Uh, on the Chiller Network called Slasher that I'm starring at 9 o'clock Friday night. Watch it. That's all I'm going to say. Love y'all. Um, acting, modeling. Uh, yeah, acting and modeling. That's what I've been doing. Love it? Yeah. Oh, and I run a, a massage company and a Hawaiian coffee company. That's what I do on the side. Oh, and yet I've never got any of this coffee. Or any massages. <laughs> So Power Overcon is August 12th, 13th, and 14th, Pasadena Convention Center. You get tickets online, official Power Morphicon. I uh, do another show called Robo Toy Fest. That will be May 22nd here at the convention hall as well. Steve? I was saying, can I go to Power Morphicon? You can come to Power Morphicon. We love you guys. Thank you guys for coming. We love you. Go, go, Power Rangers.